Hi, in this tutorial we're going to look at two different options in Google Calendars, and these are known as Tasks and Reminders. Now, Tasks have been around for a long time. Reminders were introduced in late 2015. So let's take a look first at Tasks. In your Google Calendar, you start with a default calendar that has the name of your account, and also one that may come up as Reminders. If you mouse over that, you're going to get a drop-down arrow, and when you click it, you'll have the option to switch to Tasks. So if you see Tasks, that's fine. If you don't see it, you can switch to it. And this is the older of the two. But we'll go over it quickly, just in case it's something that you prefer to use. When you open Tasks, a column on the right opens up, and it allows you to leave notes for yourself. So over here, I can start to put things that I need to do. So I need to, um, I need to go to the supermarket. I need to return library books. I need to uh, grade my tests and do my lesson plans. Okay, so I've added things to my tasks. When those things are completed, and they'll appear over here, I can hide them as well. This is my Tasks menu. Simply clicking on the colored box shuts it off. You'll notice it now is white and it's hidden. When I want them back, I click here. Now, the simplest thing you can do with a task, you can click on the arrow next to it, and you can assign a due date to it if you'd like. So I'm going to say that that is going to be the 20th of September, and I could leave myself some notes. So since I'm going to the supermarket, I'm going to say milk and bread. Okay, return library books. I'll say that's going to be on the 20th as well. This is everything I'm going to do on one day. And I'm going to say that they uh, that closes at 4 p.m. Just leave a note for myself. And you get the idea. You can leave yourself little notes. It's a way to stay organized. And of course, one of the best features is that this is all available on your phone as well. So on a mobile device, it just helps you throughout the day to stay organized. Now as you complete activities, you simply check them off. So a simple to-do list, a couple of options um, you can add to it, some details, and then you can check them off. Now what happens when I no longer want to see them? Okay, they are checked. There is a trash can at the bottom, and that will allow me to remove them one at a time, whichever one is selected, whichever one I'm clicked on. And maybe I'll leave that one. I'll uncheck it and just leave it up there for now. Also in the bottom toolbar, there's a plus sign. That would be another way to add a menu item or uh, something to your list. But of course, you can add something to your list simply by coming to the next available spot and typing it here. Now, if you decide that you'd like this done earlier in the day, so I have my list here and I didn't think to write this to-do item until after these others were written, but it's something that I want to do earlier. It's very easy. You just mouse over it, grab it on the left, and you can drag them and change the order. Okay. In the menu, I could create a new list with a different name. I could delete a list. I could rename this list if I'd like, so let me do that. Um, say OK. So now I've got a Saturday's list. I can come in here and I can make a new list. And they're going to list out below, so I can jump between my lists. I'm not going to see them at the same time, but I can go back and forth between Saturday and Sunday's list by using this menu item at the bottom. Now it turns out that I really don't need Sunday's list, so I am going to come up here and say delete the list. And it's going to tell me that it will be permanently deleted, and I say that's okay. 
Okay. Refresh list would just basically you wouldn't have to use it often, but you might want to do that if um, you were on another device and you weren't sure that all your updates, you came in there and you know you'd added some things, but you don't see it on your phone. So you can cause it to look back and refresh itself. In addition, these actions are available to you. So you can indent, unindent, move up or move down, edit the details, print a list, view your completed tasks, and then you can sort by due date or clear the completed tasks. So these are just ways to manage things maybe a little more efficiently than using the trash can or drag, oh well, or dragging things up and down depending on how much you have to move. I personally think in a lot of cases it's, it's just easier to do this. But those options are there. What it does allow you to do though, it, it allows you to set a hierarchy. So if I didn't want this to be my Saturday list, I could rename it to so now it's riches list and I'm going to add some items such as Saturday Sunday and Monday and what I'd like to do now is I'm going to take Sunday and drag it to the top of the list Actually, I'll put Saturday at the top of the list. And on Saturday, I want to get that gas and go to the supermarket. And on Sunday, I'm going to make these reservations. So to make this a little more visually intuitive, I'm going to click on Get Gas, Actions, Indent. And I can do that to the next item. And I can do that here. And you can see now it starts to make more sense that these are the things I'm going to do on Saturday. This is what I'm going to do on Sunday. If I were to accidentally go too far and indent Monday, it would be easy to fix. I would simply unindent it. I can also click on an item and say move up. Now that just jumps it up or down. Personally, I think that in a lot of cases just dragging it is going to be easier. And if I had included dates on all of these, I could sort it by date and, and it would put it in that order. The other nice feature is if I am doing a lot of things, um, say, here I'm going to grade papers. I am going to complete lesson plans. I am going to have a grade level meeting. And to stay with my theme here, I would have to indent the three of these under Monday. Oop. The wrong one selected there. Good opportunity to use the unindent. Okay, and let's say that these three are done. I could simply come down and say clear completed tasks and that's going to be a little quicker than having to click each one and bring it to the trash can. Well that's basically how the tasks view works. Let's go back and take a look at how reminders work. To switch back to reminders you're going to mouse over tasks, use the down arrow and say switch to reminders. Now reminders do not go in a separate section of the Google Calendar. This is a newer feature. Uh, a lot of people like it uh, quite a bit. It's, it's a simple change. It's a simple change, but it is pretty useful. So let's say that I wanted to include reminders in my calendar itself, not in a separate area. So I would simply click to create an event. And what you're going to notice is the word reminder is now an option. So instead of making an event, which would happen by default as I typed my information in here, I can click Reminder. And it's going to re say, Remind me to get milk. There's a date. By default, it's all day, but if I uncheck that, I can put in a time. So I'll do that at 4 p.m. 
And I could even make it repeat. So let me do the get milk without repeating so we can see that. And there I'm leaving myself a note to get milk. I'm going to come over here to Sunday. I'm going to create a reminder. And I'm going to say complete lesson plans. I'll leave that at all day, but I'm going to repeat it. And my repeat options are very similar to what I would have in a normal event with Google Calendar. I can repeat it every day, every week, every month, or every year. I could also choose to repeat it every particular number of days or weeks. So if I was going to do this, if these are lesson plans, I'm probably going to repeat them every week. And I'm going to say, for instance, that perhaps my lesson plans are due every two weeks. So in my district, we have to do two weeks worth of lesson plans. Well, then I would put this on my calendar for every two weeks. Other options include when you want it to terminate or end. And I can do that after a certain number of occurrences. So I could say after this happens 10 times, which would take 20 weeks. In this case, it should stop. Or I can simply put in a date. So I'm going to say I would like this to stop after uh, June 24th, 2017. And I can type it in like I did, or you can use the handy dandy calendar here. So I could have just advanced across to June 17th, and let's make it the 23rd. I'll say done and create. You can see it exists here, and if I went out to October, you can see it's every two weeks. Now, how to use these in your daily organizational scheme? Simply when you're done with them, you click on them, and unlike a, unlike a regular event, it has a mark as done option. And when you click it, it is going to put a line through it, and it's going to appear on the day you click it, not necessarily on the day that it was done. So you'll notice that it was the 24th that I had it scheduled, but when I completed it, it jumped over to today's date. So to cl complete these lessons, I'm going to mark as done. And note that the completed reminders, the things that were completed on this one particular day, have combined themselves. It now says two reminders done. And if there was a third, it would say three reminders done. And by clicking on it, I can actually see which things were done. And that's really it for reminders. It's a very simple tool, uh, but you might find it useful in, in helping organize yourself, especially if you're a big Google Calendar user.